Okay, hi everybody, it's Dara. And I wanna talk about decluttering, about why to declutter, and how I do it. Because quite clearly, I've got a bit of a mess on the island. What I do is I just look in there and when it becomes really unappealing in a drawer, in a junk drawer, any drawer, I pile it all out on a surface, like an island, or a bed, or a dresser, and I take a look at what's there and I really try and go through and pull out unfinished project projects. I pull out things that need to be hung or given away and sometimes they go back in the drawer and that's never really pleasing because when you put unfinished back in projects back in the drawer that's all that ends up happening is they end up sitting in the drawer and what I'm saying to you is that unfinished projects things unused unappreciated cluttered up end up draining us of our precious life force so not only is it taking up precious real estate in my kitchen in this amazing accessible drawer whatever drawers are accessible to you should be only the things you use and the other drawer should be only the things you love or will use at some other point so if they're in there and you're you may be aware or not aware but if, if you think you're not aware that you have clutter it's still affecting you it's like a gentle energy drain on the battery of your life force so not only is it taking up precious real estate in a drawer, it's taking up real estate in your head because you realize you have to do it and you should do it. And then it's taking up that energetic force that is just draining you when you're realizing it or not realizing it. Plus, there's just this awareness that there's stuff going on and do you need it? And what, do you, what if you do need something? Where exactly is it? And to me, there's nothing better than being organized and knowing where the screwdriver is and knowing that there's a place for it and putting it back. And so this is a struggle for many of us in, there really isn't, it seems, not enough time in the day to go through projects like this. A bag full of keys that may or may not be applicable at this given time. Some of them are not, I can see that. This is a small job. So if you have a big decluttering job to do, then tackling something like this when you have a whole mess or boxes that you have to step over to get to your bed, this doesn't make sense. This can go back in your drawer. Or if you're somebody like me who's been doing this for three years and you're at the tail end, then by all means, tackle the minutia as I call it. Deal with the minutia. Because there really is there no thing too big or too small and there is nowhere to hide. There's nowhere that doesn't matter in your life. There's no part of your body that doesn't matter. There's no drawer in your home that doesn't matter. There's no attic, there's no basement, there's no garden. So when we do this, um, it gives us this incredible feeling of being in control, of being able to discriminate what comes into our homes. What's gonna go in that drawer? I get to decide. And it's a practice in decision making. So for those of us who have a hard time, what should I do with this CD I bought at the Optimum Health Institute and am I ever really going to listen to their exercise thing? Probably not. I need to pass it on even though I bought it and I'm thinking of a couple of friends who would love to have this uh, gentle workout. Uh, what do I do with this bag of poles for my blinds? And I didn't call three day blinds to come back and fix the blinds. There's two blinds they have that were broken. You know what? I need to call them. That's going to stay out. I'm at the point where I'm not putting unfinished projects or keys they may not work back into this drawer. But that's only because I've done the garage is pristine, the studio, my bedroom, the closet is now pristine. So then you get down to the nitty gritty, to the little last lingering things. And then you, or if you want, you start with the little things first, if that's more comfortable for you. But we get to this point where our bodies become clean, right? Where we, we are detoxifying. We become less, it becomes less tolerable, tolerable for us to have clutter around, to have things that don't belong. And that means toxic chemicals in our environment. It means the cleaning products that aren't, aren't chemical free. It means the makeup that isn't good for us. 
It means that whatever we breathe in and put it on our skin, um, the shoes we don't wear, uh, the bags we don't use anymore, the when we have three of something and we don't need three of something, it's very powerful. It's very, very powerful because when you get to this point where I've gotten to after three years and my friends say, how could you possibly have anything left to declutter? And you can get to a whole new level, trust me, uh, where you realize that, you know, a hat box full of your mom's stuff that doesn't really make you feel good when you look at it is just somebody else's karma. And I'm not interested in holding on to karma. I'm interested in holding on to love and really good memories. But I don't know what that object is holding on to. And so we have to feel it. If you can't think about the object, look at it and see, feel how it makes you feel. And so that's what I want to say is helpful. And the cleaner we get, the cleaner we want to be, the cleaner our bodies are, the less likely we're going to put in sludge. The cleaner our homes are, the less likely we're going to be to hang on to extra stuff that my friend Jane, so well she put it, it's like karmic, karmic sludge, that we hold on to stuff that just doesn't need to be ours anymore. And I've gotten to a place where I realized that I want to focus. I really want to focus on what I'm here to do. So not only am I discriminating what I put in my mouth, which I have been for years, I'm discriminating about what I put on my body. I've decided I only want a certain kind of clothes. I'm not gonna have all the things that I used to wear. It doesn't suit me anymore. I moved them out. Somebody else is probably enjoying them. And that's my body, my clothes, my makeup, clean, clear, and bright. Um, and only the things that I'm so particular about what I buy now, so I'm not spending extra money. And then it also comes with relationships and setting boundaries because what comes into your home, the front door is a, ba a boundary. What goes into your mouth is a boundary. And what comes into your life, there needs to be a boundary there. And the more that there's a boundary, the more that we can love. So when we're discerning, we realize in order to be able to be discerning, we have to be clean first. It's hard to be discerning. We're cleaning out, we're cleaning out. Once we start to see where we get to that really clean space, we start to see, wait a minute, I'm spending so much time and energy getting rid of this stuff. Why on earth would I bring junk in? I'm spending so much energy cleaning up my body. Why on earth would I bring bad food in? And I'm spending so much time and energy making my life so beautiful. Why would I bring in anybody that's going to drain it? So we have to really pay attention to what is draining us. And that could be in a junk drawer, that could be the food we're eating, and it could be the people who've stepped over some boundaries. So we're gonna create some beautiful drawers, some beautiful food, and some beautiful boundaries with people. And I am telling you, cleaning up the body and cleaning up the home gets us to that next place. So I want you to get there with me. I love you guys. If you're interested in knowing, uh, getting these really in-depth videos that I'm making for more with Dara, join over there. Um, I'm doing a feng shui giveaway. I'm giving away a piece of jewelry. It's a nine day celebration starting tomorrow and I will hopefully see you there. If not, I will see you here. Get your greens on.